Hey guys, welcome to another episode of New Zealand's Biggest Gap Year, where a couple of years ago, Robin and I did 365 days of 365 activities in New Zealand. And in today's episode, we're hitting the road once again, doing a few stops along the way, first going to a place called Eltham, which is a pretty quirky town, and also stopping at the Holland Gardens, because who doesn't like gardens? Um, And join us for the end of this episode, where we're going to go through some questions and comments that we received the first time that we published the video. So join us at the end. We are making our way to Apunake. We are going to take maybe about two hours to get there, stopping along the way to see a town which is meant to be the cheese capital of New Zealand, which has got Robin wet in his pants. But turn out that Eltham is actually a ghost town. There is no one and nothing. So we're walking down around, you know, in Main Street and we stop along, you know, we, we see all the shop. Everything is like abandoned and all closed. Closed here, closed here, closed there, closed there, closed here, closed there. Um, is that an old residence here which simply says old folks on it? <laughs> The story of Eltham and why is it so popular is basically because there were a Chinese guy called Chu Chong which came in New Zealand um, in the late 1800s and um, so he arrived from China uh, where milk and dairy products were absolutely not popular this time and he was like hey I kind of like milk, butter and cheese I think that's going to be a great thing for the world and this is going to be a great industry for New Zealand so he was like, hey, my sister, my brother, we can export that to the world. So he bought a big farm here in Eltham and industrialized it, making it like, you know, all the process much more automatic and mechanical. So you can produce bigger quantity at cheaper price and start exporting it. And I think it's in 1892 that he actually sent the first butter to England, starting the New Zealand dairy industry, which is now the biggest industry in the country. And so we learned that a few days ago when going dairy farming. I think that's the story. I'm probably totally wrong. Since those days, it looks like the place hasn't been touched. Yeah, the buildings have been neglected somewhat and it literally looks like all the shops and homes here. People have just up and left and not taken a thing with them. We look through some shop windows. There's still things in there. Old doll's heads. There's a whole memorial to a lady inside a shop with literally all her possessions and saying like, you know, like, in loving memory of Barbara and all the stuff still left in the house. Like, this is how much of a ghost town it is. Even the houses are gravestones, literally, for, you know, for ghosts. It's, it's a bizarre town. I am looking for the cheese of Eltham. I will be finding some cheese here. I have heard it's a great cheese town. I will find a cheese. Are we going to find cheese? Yes. Will you find cheese? I can't find cheese, but I think you'll be able Do to. Do you have cheese? Uh, I want cheese. I'm going to uh, follow my nose and find cheese. Okay, Bosque. <laughs> Hey man, looks like you got a lot of cheese right here, or at least you got the milk. Where can I get some cheese here in Eltham? What's that? Oh, he doesn't know. Keep on looking. So, we arrived inside the cheese bar and... Well... That was not what I expected. Um, there is no bar. There is no one kind of serving you. There is no super fancy cheese. It's basically everything that is already in the supermarket. Yeah. I mean, w- w- what noise does Dream Shattered make? Because that's basically the soundtrack you should be playing right now. Gonna try some cheese. 
all together on the same cracker? Oh no, like bite them individually. What the hell? I'm sorry, I'm not usually picky about things I see in New Zealand really, like everywhere we've seen so far has been pretty awesome, but I'm sorry, this cheese bar is disappointment. So let's move on to the Holland Garden. For once in New Zealand, we are driving down a straight road and we hear a just bang. That bang sound is the sound of metal wheel touching ground where tyre is meant to be in between. The tyre has exploded. Robin's phoning the roadside assistance, having issues there, but finally the message gets across where we are that we need someone to come and change our tyre. Usually if you've got a small camper van or a car, you can change the tyre yourself. It's a job everyone should learn to do if they are a driver but we have been advised with this massive camper van with this massive motorhome not to do that ourselves there's a special way of doing it that's not pretty is it pretty good job yeah the mechanic is done he's like hey here's your paper slip for the for the car get the bolt checked within 100 kilometers, that's the law. So we arrived at the Holland's Garden, which is one of the three most prestigious gardens of Taranaki, which uh, were created and maintained during its lifespan by Bernie Holland. There's some fantails, which aren't actually that scared of us, so we get some cool little pictures of those guys. And um, we are following the fantails and to my surprise, there are plants and flowers in bloom during winter. To me, I thought flowers didn't bloom in winter, but camellias do, so this is a surprise and a welcome surprise. More pictures and more plants because no I love plants. We end up at the Hollard Center. This is a building with some like vintage stuff in there, but the real draw to the Holland Centre is the complimentary tea and coffee. It's time to head to Opunake where we're going to be spending the night in the Opunake Holiday Park. There is some gnarly waves, it's a surfer's paradise and we can't wait to spend the day there tomorrow. I've been here for three days, no one suspects anything. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that episode. And we're just gonna go through a few of the questions and comments that we received the first time that we published this video. Starting with Anna Witter that says, love the fantails, they're so cute. Uh, sad about the cheese, but what can you expect in a ghost town, huh? Edom is disappointing and New Zealand cheese is otherwise so amazingly good. Um, but bet the tire burst only in sympathy. Um, yeah, this this uh, cheese related episode uh, d d didn't seem to go so well in terms of finding the best cheese in New Zealand or a road which didn't burst our tires. But sometimes these things happen and we manage to um, figure it all out, um, which is all good. The good thing about um, renting a car or a camper van in New Zealand is that pretty much 100% of the time you do get roadside assistance included with your car rentals and stuff like that. So usually you don't have to worry too much if disaster strikes like that. Um, in terms of the cheese, luckily we can say that um, Later on in New Zealand's in New Zealand's biggest gap year, we do find some other places around New Zealand which does incredible cheese. Um, even there's a we even visit a cheese factory that is in a little shipping container, which is pretty cool. So don't worry, there's there's more good cheese to come in New Zealand's biggest gap year. Um, and otherwise, we did get another comment um, asking about what else is there to do in El Firm? It just looks like that there's a cheese factory and murals. Why w else would we stop there? Okay, so the thing is with El Firm is that 
We um were uh, we just wanted to make it a quick pit stop on the way to um a Punaki, which is you know it's it's a bit of a, a longer drive, so we did want to do some quick things there, and certainly visiting the cheese factory and checking out just the sort of the state the sort of historic buildings and stuff of the town was a really quick thing to do. But we do have an article on nzpocketguide.com stating all the different things you can do in Eltham. For instance, nearby Eltham, just another 20 minute drive away, there are some really nice lakes with them, um, with some uh, walks nearby and you can go and just have a nice picnic there as well. So there's some really good lakes around. Um, and nearby also is a place called Pioneer Village, which is sort of like an old um, settlement village, how New Zealand used to look like before, um, before, well, basically about 100 years ago, this is what New Zealand used to be like, which to be fair, Eltham itself looks like Pioneer Village, but if you want more of an experience, um, even with a train ride, for instance, then there's the actual Pioneer Village nearby. So that's just a couple of other things you could be doing in Eltham if you were spending a little bit more time there. All right, I hope you enjoyed that episode, and if you do have any comments or questions of your own, make sure to put them in the comments of this video. Otherwise, you can join us on our live Q&A session we do every single Sunday at 8 a.m. New Zealand time, right here on YouTube. You can just ask your questions directly in the live chat. And otherwise, you can head to nzpocketguide.com, which has thousands and thousands of articles to help you plan your trip in New Zealand. All right, until the next episode, see you later.